Saturday Night Live is a show that has lasted for literal decades and in the recent 2020 climate has been a godsend for many in terms of content, especially during the 2020 election season where they once again went full tilt to make sure everyone knew the silliness of the election going on. Another thing that makes SNL so great is that they have gone and made big name stars out of all sorts of comedians, some of whom have jumped ship, if you will, to pursue their careers. But not all of their stories are what you think. Allow us to show you the real reason why these 10 stars left SNL. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 10, Chevy Chase. Good evening. Thank you very much. In many ways, Chevy Chase was Saturday Night Live during his run on the show. He was the biggest star. He was the biggest draw. He got a career because of it. Not all of it worked out, obviously, but during his prime time, he was doing all sorts of big time shows and movies. But was that the only reason he left SNL? Not quite. He later revealed the real reason he bailed on SNL. I left for a girl that I was in love with, Chase told Today in 2007. It had nothing to do with lucrative film deals that were awaiting me. I was very much in love with a girl who would just not leave California. The woman he is talking about is his ex-wife, Jacqueline Carlin, who at the time lived in New York and wouldn't come out to California to be with him. So he had to move there for her. That marriage didn't last and Chase would later admit that he regretted leaving SNL like he did. There's no telling how much bigger his career would have been if he hadn't departed during the second season of the now iconic show. Number nine, Charles Rocket. What is it that you do during the day? I repair uh, office equipment. Repair office equipment and you? Yeah, this one is perfectly SNL. You see, by season five, all the original cast and even the creator of the show had left the series, meaning they had to get a new showrunner and cast to keep with the funny. It didn't go well at all. A historic low was reached in the 11th episode of the season when cast member Charles Rocket, for whatever reason, decided in the closing moments of the program to let the F word fly during a spoof of Dallas. It's the first time I've been shot in my life, he says, referencing a sketch in which his character caught a bullet. I'd like to know who the F did it. Watching the video, it's clear this is no flub. It was a brazen, seemingly intentional provocation of the part of the performer, and it was the last straw for the studio, which began cleaning house promptly after the episode aired. Only two members of the cast were kept, and Rocket wasn't one of them. What's more, they cleaned out the writer's room and went off the air for a month, nearly getting canceled in the process. They bounced back, obviously, but it was easily one of the darkest moments in the show's history. Number eight, Harry Shearer. Harry Shearer is best known for providing the voices of Mr. Burns, Principal Skinner, and numerous other characters on The Simpsons. He also holds the rare distinction of quitting Saturday Night Live not once, but twice. Hired as a writer-performer for the 1979-1980 season, Shearer wound up quitting shortly after he was hired. Living hell, he later told IGN of his time on the show. He would eventually go back after having a positive experience with his friends on the set during an episode, but later would quit yet again because he was miserable. After doing so, SNL's then-producer Dick Ebersole put out a press release announcing Shearer had parted ways with the show due to creative differences. In the book, Shearer declared that when a reporter called asking for his comment, he quipped, yeah, I was creative and they were different. Sounds about right with SNL. Number seven, Paul Schaefer. Most people associate Paul Schaefer with his time with David Letterman on his legendary late night show. But he was indeed one of the original cast members of Saturday Night Live. He was there at first to play music, but would eventually go on to do on-camera impersonations and other skits. But when the mass exodus we alluded to earlier happened, he left with them. I did the first five years of SNL, and everyone in the original group was leaving, so I decided to see what else was out there," Schaefer explained. After a couple of years working as a studio musician, he was summoned to meet with a young comedian who was launching a new late-night show for NBC, David Letterman. The two hit it off right away, 
and spent the next 33 years doing TV together via The Late Show. So it seemed he made the right decision because he left SNL and got a career as a result. Number 6. Billy Crystal and Martin Short Arguably one of Saturday Night Live's most beloved seasons was its temp, which brought heavy hitters Billy Crystal and Martin Short into the fold. Two comedic heavy hitters no matter who you are. While Crystal delivered memorable characters ranging from Suave Fernando to talk show host Joe Franklin, Short resurrected such SCTV favorites as Ed Grimley and Jackie Rogers Jr. Yet, despite how popular they were and how great a show they were doing, neither Crystal nor Short returned after that season. Turns out, that was for a very basic reason. I had a one-year contract, Short explained in Oral History Live from New York. I certainly approached the show not as someone who was going to be around, obviously, for more than one year. So I felt that I had to do a lot and be in as many interesting things as possible because it was just a limited time. Crystal had similar thoughts, and you can understand why they didn't want to overstay their welcome, something other SNL cast members never seemed to pick up on. Number 5. Dennis Miller Oh boy, there's a lot you can say about Dennis Miller, and a lot of it is bad. But on SNL, he was the new anchor of Weekend Update, and he was a big hit with fans until he decided to go and leave in 1991. Miller's next move was to host a late-night talk show, The Dennis Miller Show, which debuted in January of 1992. In an interview with the Chicago Tribune to promote the show, Miller explained why he left SNL. I was very happy where I was, he admitted, but said the arrival of his son made him reset his priorities and cast a wider net career-wise. I'm not trying to sound too maudlin, but something about his birth reacquainted this urge in me to strive for things. When I had the kid, I thought, why don't you go see what you can do? Why don't you test it a little? Make the boy proud. Sadly for him, his move didn't work. His show was canceled and subsequent other things he did was equally as failed, like his Monday night football stint. Number four, Norm MacDonald. For 1,000 deaths a year. In second place, O.J. Simpson. Continuing on with Weekend Update hosts, Norm MacDonald took over that role in 1993. And at the time, the biggest thing going on in the world was the O.J. Simpson trial, which MacDonald had no problem making fun of repeatedly and royally in terms of how many jokes he cracked about it and how impactful they were. The problem was one of the NBC executives was a friend of O.J.'s, and that apparently led to MacDonald getting fired in 1998. He was fine with it, ironically enough. Number three. Ben Stiller. This one is honestly a bit ironic considering how good Ben Stiller is comedically. You see, he came onto the show in 1989, and when he was brought on, he thought he was going to be doing short films and sorts that would be airing between the live sections of the show. But it wasn't. Rather, he was doing the live sketches, and he honestly didn't like it. I knew I wasn't good live because I would get nervous, Stiller told Stern. I just felt I couldn't do well in that situation. Due to that, he lasted all of six episodes before quitting. Number two, Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman is a very curious case in terms of comedy because either you like her or you don't. And apparently, SNL didn't like her after a while. Mainly because not only did she only last a season, she got fired by facts. Yeah, for real. She herself said the experience was boring and she apparently didn't need it because she was destined for TV and movie greatness. Number one, Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler and SNL have a very interesting history together. He and Chris Farley, rest in peace, were brought in for the 16th season and did really well. They were top stars, and then they were fired five years later, and not even Sandler can tell you why. At the time, I was hurt because I didn't know what else I was going to do, he told Stern, placing the blame on NBC executives. But I remember when I saw Farley, he said to me, me too, they don't want me either. We were both like, F this shit. We got mad together, pretended we weren't sad, and pretended this was for the best. He would eventually return and even helped honor the show during its 40th anniversary celebration. 
but the memory of being fired no doubt still hurts. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at Saturday Night Live and of the big time stars that left it for one reason or another? Can you believe that some of them left the way they did? Do you think that some of the reason for their departures were petty? Which star's departures affected you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.